Hey guys, today we are making something fun in our slow cooker. We are making crock pot meat zonia. All while having a whole lot of fun. Check this out. All that cheesy goodness. Yum. my camper kitchen. I am Chris from recipes that crock.com and today I have a very very exciting recipe for you and I forgot to turn on my side camera over here so I'm gonna do that. Sorry Mikey. We are going to make what we in my family call meat zonia which is a meat loaf like dish that has all the fun flavors of lasagna. So it's layered like lasagna, but it doesn't have the noodles because we're making it low carb. And also because it is totally delicious the way that it is. So there are no noodles needed. <laughs> so what I wanted to do is show you guys how to make this. It has several steps. So I've already done a little bit of my work ahead of time so that we can kind of do this all at one time. Um, the first thing um, we're going to do is get ourselves a six quart slow cooker. Uh, for those of you that are going to ask me if you can make it in the casserole crock, I have tested it in the casserole crock. It does cook up just fine. However, I do prefer a regular six quart slow cooker just because I like how um, thick uh, it makes each of the layers. And then I also really love how it does a really great job of browning up the edges so just like regular lasagna how you have kind of have those crispy edges um, I found that our ninja definitely does that for us so we're gonna make it in the six quart today you can make it however you want to make it at home um, but to get started what we're gonna do is we are going to mix up a, a double version of our Italian meatball um, recipe which I think I've showed you guys on this channel before. Um, it's the same meatball that we use in our both our crock pot and our electric pressure cooker version of our Italian wedding soup. Um, they are low carb and I've got all the ingredients inside this baggie and this baggie is going to give me two, actually three, uh, three benefits. One, it is going to be a super duper easy way to mix up my ingredients without getting my hands all yucky. It keeps my bowl clean. I'm only going to have to use one bowl that I'll have to wash up later whenever I'm um, making another layer. And it can um, also serve somewhat as like a little bit of a rubber glove <laughs> as I try to press it in there so my hands don't get all gross with all the stuff. Kind of like we do this with meatloaf a lot of times. So we're doing this with our meatball mixture, which is what we're making. So what we have in here two pounds of ground sausage just regular breakfast ground sausage you can use Italian sausage if you would prefer you can use hot and spicy if you like we we use the regular mild that's what we've got in here and then we oh the ninja's yelling at me cook <laughs> then we have a half a cup of heavy cream two eggs a tablespoon of Italian seasoning and our secret ingredient which is a cup of crushed um, pork rinds. This is our binder. This is what we're using in lieu of uh, breadcrumbs or crackers or bread for the meat, the meatball, meatloaf, the meat layer of this dish. Um, a lot of people ask me if they can skip that. I wouldn't. It adds so much flavor. It's a great seasoning and it also helps bind that layer together. We just really love the flavor combination. So, um, and then salt and pepper to taste. Uh, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to zip this bag up and then use the bag. I need to get the air out of there so I don't pop this everywhere. <laughs> what I'm going to do is use the bag instead of just sticking my hands down in my bowl and mixing this mixture or even using my meatball chopper like mix and chop thingy this is just a quick and easy way especially since I'm gonna have to press it down in the bottom um, as a flat layer one of the benefits that I do love about this recipe is you don't have to brown the ground beef or not ground beef the ground sausage beforehand like you would regular lasagna it is 
what we're actually cooking up in this dish is the meat. Okay, so what we're gonna do, first and foremost, is we are going to press this down into the bottom of our ninja. So I'm just gonna open this baggie and I'm gonna stick the stuff in and I'm gonna use it a little bit like a glove as you can see. I haven't been showing you real well. So now I can use the bag to press everything down and get it nice in a single layer without getting my hands all nasty. I'll still need to wash my hands, but it's just a little bit different than getting this all over me the whole nine yards. This is also one of those things, since this has several steps to it, if you were wanting to throw this together sometime, you could make up the meatball portion of it or the meat layer portion of it beforehand and uh, put it in the bag so that it'll be ready and going for you so you already have it whenever you're ready and going. Okay, now I realized I didn't get all my ingredients out so I have to get my tomato sauce out. So y'all know that I'm a big Rayos fan and this is going to use a whole jar of Rayos. I'm going to grab my spatula that I'm going to uh, spread everything out for this dish. I'm going to just go ahead, make sure I get everything nice in all the corners. So as you can see, we have the meat layer all the way down into the bottom of the crock. And now we're going to pour half of a 24 ounce jar of um, marinara sauce on here. We prefer the tomato basil. You can use whatever tomato sauce um, or whatever marinara sauce you prefer. Um, and if you're eating low carb, uh, you can use your favorite low carb sauce. So what we're going to do is just pour about half, just kind of eyeballing it a little bit just kind of watch half of that tomato sauce down in there we're going to use the other half on a layer here in just a sec this is also a little bit easier than regular lasagna because you're not having to get down in there as much okay um, my I got some stuff in my bowl here hang on just a sec oh it's the salt <laughs> I see some salt down in there. Okay, so now you need a bowl because we're going to do the ricotta um, layer. And to the ricotta layer, we're going to do about four cups of baby spinach washed. Um, I generally, for doing that, I generally do about two nice big handfuls for about four cups. Okay. And then to that, I'm going to add 16 ounces of whole milk ricotta cheese. Oh, my, my spatula kind of fell down in there. We're just going to stir this in, stir this up to where it is all combined. It takes just a minute. Mikey might have to speed it up. It doesn't have to be perfect you're just trying to combine it so that it'll all be your next layer so what I'm gonna do now is carefully transfer it over here I just kind of do a couple dollops in different areas and then try to spread it out much like regular lasagna spreading it out isn't <laughs> as easy as one might think it's okay if the sauce kind of incorporates in what you're just wanting is it to get as spread out as possible so that every bite will have a little bit of that ricotta cheese um it's okay that the sauce kind of comes up on the cheese layer because the next layer is sauce so we're just kind of putting sauce above and below okay and I'm making a mess. Lots of 
washing your hands in this one. <laughs> That's why I like using that bag, because it kind of makes a messy job a little less messy. Okay, so now you can see I've got my spinach and ricotta cheese layer down. And on top of that, I'm going to pour the rest of my pasta sauce and spread that out. Let's see if I can, yeah, there we go. the last pasta sauce layer we are going to top it with mozzarella cheese which I forgot to get out of the fridge <laughs> so we went about three cups you could do two if you would prefer less we just really like a really cheesy lasagna so you're gonna do about two three cups of mozzarella cheese on top just spread out like you would normal lasagna. This is going to make our RV smell so incredible. My family loves this recipe. Truth be told, this will be the third time I will have made it this week because I've been testing it and testing it in different um, slow cookers. And no one is complaining. My family that doesn't typically make a big deal about uh, leftovers everybody has been quite all right with mom uh, testing this to its fullest to make sure it's exactly the way you guys need it and they're willing to be the guinea pigs and I'll tell you another secret we don't only eat this for lunch um, a lot of people in our family think that this makes a very lovely uh, um, breakfast dish as well so what we're going to do is we're going to put this under high. Um, we're going to, not under high, I'm used to talking about my pressure cooker. We're going to put this on high and we're going to cook it for three and a half to four hours. Um, what we are looking for is for it to be nice and bubbly all the way around the edges. And if it crisp up that cheese around the edge a little bit, that's okay. That's great, actually. Um, what we really need to do is we need to cook it long enough that that entire meat layer gets done. And so what we found um, in both my casserole crock and my ninja, it took about three and a half hours. Uh, but if your slow cooker tends to cook slow or doesn't cook as warm as maybe what some of our other recipes call for, then you might cook it just a little bit longer. And if you are um, at all concerned that it isn't bubbling or the cheese isn't fully melted or anything like that, uh, definitely use a meat thermometer and get down in the center and in the meat section of the uh, meat zonia to make sure that that sausage is done. Um, it will not be like a sausage patty on the bottom. It will have a much more tender texture, especially if you use the uh, casserole crock. But it will because it'll be a thinner layer, so it'll kind of fall apart a little bit. Um, what else? Oh, much like regular lasagna we also love this the next day even more than the day when you cook it hot when you cook it hot it kind of falls apart a little bit when you cut the pieces out and all that kind of stuff which is yummy the warm melty cheeses and all that kind of stuff but the next day it has set up and it is just even better because the flavors have all just like really soaked into all the layers so We'll be back here in three and a half to four hours on high, and I'll see you then in three, two, one. And we are back. It has been about three and a half hours on high, and our meat zanya is definitely done. As you can see, that cheese is nice and crispy on the edges, and it's bubbling and it's ready to be cut into. Now, if you want perfect lasagna-like um, pieces, I'm gonna tell you something that's gonna disappoint you. 
the easiest way to do that is to take it out of the crock, let it cool till it cools down quite a bit and then you can kind of slice into it because while it's hot the layers are going to be a little bit more wobbly um that's why when i when i mentioned that leftovers are like regular lasagna the next day they tend to be a little bit more set up it's the same situation here however regardless it is very 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 yummy so let's go ahead accidentally shut this off I keep doing that let's go ahead and cut into it you want to cut all the way down to the bottom and I usually like cut the whole thing and cut all the portions and then you can cut this into eight pieces or you can cut it into um, 10 pieces. It depends on how big of a piece and if you're having other other parts to your meal. I try to cut it, um, like I said, into 10 pieces. That way if you want a little bit more, you can um, get it because it is a very hearty casserole. Let me go on and cut these and then I'll pull one out for you so you can see just how yummy it is. Okay, so I think I'm going to grab a spoon just because it is very wobbly. I wanted my solid spoon, but I'm going to have to go with my slotted spoon. We're not going for pretty right now, obviously, <laughs> or I'd let it set up just a little bit more. All right, grab a fork and come see ya. Now tomorrow, these slices will be all set up, but today they are yummy, ooey gooey layers so you've got your mozzarella and your tomato layer with your spinach and ricotta layer and then on the bottom is that yummy yummy sausage layer and the best bites have a little bit of each layer i'm gonna try not to uh, burn myself as i take a little nibble of this Mm-mm-mm. Mm. So good. Now, when we were testing out this recipe, one of the thoughts that I had was to just do a sausage layer. I am so glad we decided to do our meatball layer on the bottom. It's so tender and so flavorful. It in and of itself is amazing. But then you add that tomato basil marinara to it and then a creamy spinach layer oh, my family has asked me to test it eventually with some mushrooms which I'm gonna do but because I didn't have any mushrooms and I haven't tested that I didn't make it that way today well, I'll tell you what this is a hearty delicious flavorful meal flavorful meal and it's low carb has no noodles in it but it tastes so much like regular lasagna like a really good lasagna to me so i very much enjoy it if you guys like this video we'd love for you to give us a thumbs up if you're not already a member of the crock posse we'd love for you to click subscribe down below and become a member of our slow cooking family rv traveling family foodie loving family around here um if you'd like notified every time we upload a video click the dingling that's the notification bell down below and that will tell youtube to let you know every time we upload a video but whatever you do we hope you laugh often eat good food and speak life bye guys 
If you want to see the latest, click on the left right here. If you feel like subscribing, click on the right, my dear. And if you think we're funny, enough to send us money, click the Patreon link below. And